Midsummer in South Africa coincides with the holidays and it gives me an appetite for the outdoors in more ways than one. With this in mind, Melo contacted our friends, the Chili Chocolate Chefs, who are a sister act of culinary entrepreneurs who create edible works of art. The idea inspired them and here's their take on a gourmet style picnic. Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm Zainab, this is my sister Fatima and we are the Chili Chocolate Chefs. Now we're into summer and summer is the perfect time for picnics. You have long afternoons and such glorious fruit available that it just works out all perfectly. Today we're making a sangria mocktail, a summer berry pavlova, a roasted vegetable tart and a pistachio and rose cake. Let's start with the drink. I will start with the liquids and Fatima, you will start with the fruit. The nice thing about the sangria mocktail is all the fruity flavours and goodness that goes into it. And with summer, all of this is all easily available. So we've got lovely pomegranate, strawberries, apple and oranges as well. You're going to need sugar syrup, which is a cup of sugar and two cups of water, a cup of cold tea, and then your two juices, freshly squeezed orange juice and pomegranate juice. You can actually substitute the pomegranate juice for strawberry juice and the orange juice for apple juice. First, we're going to pour the sugar syrup. Next, the cold tea. We're gonna leave the tea bag in so that it seeps in with the flavor. Next is the orange juice. And lastly, the pomegranate juice. Don't fill it right to the top because you need to have enough space for your fruit. Okay, can we start adding? Push that down. And we're gonna give this a nice stir. Perfect. That looks good. Let's get started with the pavlova so that can get baking quickly. Good idea. While you're getting it ready, I'm just gonna put the juice on the table. For the summer pavlova, I'll start with the egg whites and we're going to give this a good beat. When beating egg whites, your bowl needs to be completely dry and your egg whites should be at room temperature. We need to make sure these egg whites are completely stuffed and I'm going to test it out. And if it doesn't come off, we're good to go. Whoops, well done. <laughs> These are completely stiff, so they're perfect to use and we're going to get going with the rest of it. I have a cup of caster sugar that I'm going to add in. You need to add it in gradually and slowly beat as you're adding in so that it all incorporates quite nicely. I'm going to add in two teaspoons of corn flour and two teaspoons of white vinegar. and we're going to give this a beat again. Now I'll add the vanilla essence, just a teaspoon of it, and then we'll give it a last beating. Here we are, perfectly ready. You can just get on with that and I will just get the tart stuff ready. You're going to lightly fold your meringue to make sure that everything is incorporated and tip it into your prepared pan. So I've put greaseproof paper at the bottom of my tray and I'm placing my meringue mixture over it. You're gonna spread it, not too wide. You want a nice even circle. That's perfect. Let's add the chocolate. I'm going to sprinkle this over. Be quite generous with this as well. It is chocolate after all. And next, the nuts. We're going to put this in the oven on 140 for two hours. Once 
While this is baking, let's start the tart. The vegetables are prepped and ready. I'm going to cook it with some garlic, oil, salt and pepper. You're not only limited to these vegetables, you can always use other seasonal vegetables as well. I quite often like to use butternut, sweet potato, a bit of roasted tomatoes as well. Goes very well. Let's add some garlic and some oil. Let's season with some salt and pepper. Give this a good stir. You don't want your veggies to be too well cooked. You want it to have a bit of a bite because you are going to bake it for 45 minutes. This is almost done. I'm just going to bring the heat down so that it can simmer for a short while. Fatima, can you start with the pastry? For the tart base, I'm going to use regular store-bought puff pastry and we're going to be placing it into a long tart pan. Just placing the pastry into the pan and we're going to gently overlap it along the sides. We're going to do it with the second piece as well and we'll trim it at the end. Can I help you, Fati? Yeah, sure. I want to actually trim the edges and make sure that the sides are in correctly. So all you need to do is cut off a bit of the excess. You don't want to cut it too close to the edge because the pastry does shrink in the oven. Let's start assembling the tart. Okay. We have everything ready. I'll put the veggies in. Perfect. Some nice colour on these vegetables, huh? The colours of the peppers, the aubergine. I've got the halloumi cut. I'm going to tear the halloumi up. Fatu, you can help me. Cool. And you're going to place it in between the vegetables. If you're not a fan of halloumi, you can always substitute it with Danish feta or even cheddar cheese goes down quite well. We're just dotting the basil pesto on the tart. You need that kick of pesto just to bring out the true flavours of the tart. We're going to add our egg custard. There's two eggs, a half a cup of milk, a sprinkle of salt and crushed black pepper. The custard is what actually binds the whole tart together and allows it to bake nicely in the oven. We're going to bake the tart at 180 degrees for 45 minutes and that'll give us time to sort out the cake. Just prepping the pan so it's ready, I put in some greaseproof paper so the cake doesn't stick to the base of our pans. In my baking pan, we have 225 grams of flour, 225 grams of caster sugar and 4 teaspoons of baking powder. I've also added 225 grams of soft butter. And I'm going to add in the four eggs. All these ingredients popped in and we're going to put it to beat. I'm starting on a slow speed so all the ingredients mix through nicely and it doesn't come out of the bowl and I'll gradually increase it. The cake mix is ready, it's perfect consistency. Zainab, won't you just place it into these bowls so we have it ready for the oven. You're going to evenly divide your mixture out between the two so that your cake rises equally. Smooth it so that the batter reaches the edges of the pan. So this is ready for the oven. The cake goes into the oven at 180 for 20 minutes. I'm going to take the meringue out of the oven. I'm going to decorate the pavlova while Zainab garnishes the tart. The pavlova is actually nice and cool. Although we took it out of the oven, I've left it for a little while. So it's a perfect temperature to ice. It's no longer hot anymore. The cream is ready and we're just going to place it over the pavlova. Nicely spread towards the edges. For those of you who don't enjoy cream, you can always use chocolate mousse. That would be really yummy as well. The tart's ready, it's nice and golden. I'm going to garnish with the rocket first. Pepper juice, let's put that over. Feta. The perfect way to end off a summer dish is with edible flowers. They look so pretty. I have all my fruit prepped for the garnishing. Placing over some kiwi slices first. Next, I'm going to put in the pineapple. Then I'll put the melon balls. So we're just going to pop a bit of these over as well. And we still have lots more to put on it. The blueberries will be on next. And these just get scattered all over. And then the strawberries. And the strawberries is what actually brings out the nice vibrant red color. And just to finish it up, I'm going to scatter over some pomegranate seeds. So it makes it a little bit more exotic and some nice fresh mint leaves. 
The cake is now cool and ready to ice. Never ever ice a hot cake because your icing will just bleed into the cake and it won't hold. So we've just smeared over some fresh cream over the cake and I'm going to put over the second sponge over the fresh cream. Next we add more cream over the top of the cake. So it's just normal fresh cream that has been beaten and sweetened with icing sugar. Not too much but just the right amount to cover the top of the cake. And now to garnish. It's always nice to add in your flowers first. I've got some mint macarons which I'm gonna place over the cake. And then I've got mini meringues. And some pistachio. For the final touch. Fatima and Zainab had indeed created a movable feast filled with the goodness and flavors of summer and perfect for lunch or supper on the lawn.